So I did something kind of stupid. You want to see it? It's over here. Getting rid of the excursion because I got this. This is my Sprinter, uh, four-wheel drive. I'm basically going to be dailying this. I sleep back here most nights when I work so much I don't get to go home. Like this is the rig. What do you guys think? I'm just kidding. This is Rick's rig. What's that? You guys know Rick, right? He makes these really cool pouches. I meant to tell you, this is my favorite pouch you've ever made. Yeah, that's totally not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's an alpaca. <laughs> I was going to do this to you inside, but that's you hilarious. walked off. That's funny. Uh, no, you guys know Rick. What's Go that? check him out. He complains that I never call him Zero Feud. He always says Rick. So I'm like, dude, it says Zero Feud. These are what the actual pouches. Yeah. So. Soft wallet. Well, this is the cup. It's not a utility pouch. Yeah. So that we also have the pocket pouch too. Yeah. Now this is his rig. Yep. But yeah, this is really cool. But no, I am going to be doing something kind of stupid today, per usual. I'm not getting rid of the excursion, but dailying it has been okay. I love the truck. I'm never getting rid of the truck. Like I, I love it. But I need something a little more practical for like putting around town, being able to park it, go through a drive-through. Actually, you can't. You can't go through a drive-thru unless you have a passenger. Those? So basically, I have the largest SUV ever made, and now I'm also gonna own the smallest truck ever made. Just makes sense, right? We're going to look at K-Trucks, which are, it's K-E-I. They are these little Japanese import right-hand drive utility trucks uh, that are really made for like urban areas over in Japan. And I've been eyeing them for probably three or four years. About two months ago, my wife did a market for her business um, Midnight Moonrise, check it out. But <laughs> we were at a market for her and I like turned the corner and there was this, it was a K truck. I don't know if it was a Suzuki or Subaru or what model it was, maybe a Honda, but they had a cigar shop in a K truck. Coolest thing I've seen in a very long time. So they had toolboxes along the bed and they opened the toolboxes up and they just have cigars, just super cool. And then about two weeks ago, I'm just sitting at home at night watching YouTube and a video was recommended to me from a guy named Mike Festiva. And he and his brother have K trucks and they also have mini bikes and they loaded their mini bikes up in their K trucks and went on this camping trip. And I'm like, oh my God, that is, that is super cool. So I started doing some research and turns out in 2019, K trucks were made street legal in North Carolina. And that solved the one thing like that kept me from buying one. Point is, we're gonna go check out some K trucks. Apparently one of the largest importers and the guy who actually made them street legal, he lobbied and petitioned to get them legalized in North Carolina is from where I grew up effectively, Mount Airy. So we're headed to Mount Airy right now to Mayberry Mini Trucks. I don't, I don't have to get this. This is also kind of one of those fun things I want. Like if I don't get it, it's not gonna be in the day and I'll still keep driving the van. Like, hey, can I get my fast food? <laughs> <laughs> if you just drive away, you just drive away on this side. <laughs> this is awesome. And there's a lot of slop in that gear shift. I'm not going to lie. You want this one. It's kind of cool. You want one now, don't you? It's kind of cool. Damn it, I got that on video. Get in, bitches, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely putting a train horn on it. So, realistically, this is what first sent me down this path, the carry. 
it just feels like I should get a carry for carry commission. Yeah. But for me, I want a sandbar. Yeah. Or a Honda. Because those are like the more premium mini trucks. From my understanding. Oh yeah, dude. Pull the handles off, dude. Oh, that's fantastic. Good lord. This they, one. They didn't say I was getting picked up in a, this in an Uber. <laughs> This one's almost out of gas. A lot of cab noise. <laughs> These things are torquey. They're awesome. They're awesome, dude. They're torquey. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Awesome. This is kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. It's so much fun. It's... I, I really want one of these. I want to go home in one today. You don't think so? Credit card it. Side of the, I think these stay out. Right? Yeah, there should be chains. Oh, this yeah, one this one doesn't have a chain. Yeah. Um, that is cool though. Before we get back to mini trucks and Mayberry, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Exter. You guys may remember back when I did a hard wallets video earlier this year, Exter was one of my favorite hard wallets after trying out all of the ones that I could find. It was just slimmer, smarter, and I think easier to use. So Extra makes what I like to call an ejector style wallet. It will hold one all the way up to 12 or 15 cards depending on which style you choose, but you just press with your pinky and your cards fly out the top. You choose the one you want, use it, throw it back in, close it up. It's that simple. No more fumbling around with your wallet and cards at the register. You just push a button, pick what you want, close it up. Super simple. So these wallets are made out of aluminum, but they also come in carbon fiber. They come in multiple colors. And if you're a fan of leather, Exter also has that as well in this bifold. This is called the Parliament version of the Exter wallet. Now, one of the coolest things that Exter has to offer is this right here. This is called the tracker card. I can take it out of here. And let's say I misplace my wallet. I can simply pull up the app on my phone, click ring to find, and I can find the card and subsequently my wallet very easily but that's also true in reverse i can pull the card out and double tap this if i lose my phone and make my phone ring i think one of the coolest things that extra makes is this little key holder right here it's a shackle that is variable width and it also comes with a magnetic quick release built in which is really neat and has made my keys even more compact this thing is great. And finally, if you want to check out everything Extra has to offer, there's a link in the description down below. If you use that link, you can get up to 40% off your wallets this Christmas season. Just use the coupon code EDC at checkout for up to 40% off. And once again, I want to thank Extra for sponsoring this video. It has been um, two and a half hours on the road and one sleep since you last saw me. Uh, we're headed back to Mount Airy, actually, because yesterday we ran out of time. Rick had to get back. Anyway, we'll be up there. We're going to put around in them some more and I wanted to meet the owner of the place. His name is Tony. He seems like a really nice guy. Um, so I figured I'd just go back today and maybe, maybe drive it home. So since I'm going to be trying to drive this thing back, I wore this jacket right here for good luck. This says Mermaid Marina. If you guys remember from the Tennessee trip, that's where we ended up eating for several days after Buffalo saved us. And uh, as we turned onto the road that this guy lives off of, or where this is, I hit the brakes and took a left turn and lost all power steering. It's back now, but I, if I hit my brakes and turn, power steering's out. So I'm thinking that's a brake booster issue. Now I'm gonna have this to daily, but Alex has to drive this thing all the way back to Charlotte. And we're here. Look at this. This is crazy.
one, I mean, but yeah, if you it's already work like 50 right better. here and right there, yeah. that's where the actual stress point is. But yeah, it wants to pop back out, but you have to apply those pressure are, in the right place. Those are really thin. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a drip here. <laughs> that's only where I was like, wait, gray paint. And then I looked up and I was like, oh yeah. Oh, they spilled paint. Oh, oh, um, okay. Let me give you another take. In Japan, they are much more concerned about preservation Right. Then so they, they are to cover up, like looking to keep at it, it from rusting worse. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. Because if you look here, yep. that is actually purposely applied. So I have a scratch that's going to become rust. Let me just go, and they take a spray can and they just go. <laughs> we would never do that. Right. We would never do that. But right. uh, it's a cultural difference. Right for right after sulfur. We might be able to work something out there. Yeah, but. You advise against hard drive calls. Oh, don't do that. So I'm gonna the 601 comes basically right to your door. Do you have any sway with this guy? <laughs> no, 601 comes basically right to your door. Right. And to my door. Right. So I can take a back roads highway with no speed over 55 the whole way back. Yeah. Because the other one's right, nice. like similar mileage, similar so condition. I would say it has a nicer interior, I think. That this truck is a serious contender. It but so is that. Yeah. They're both very nice trucks. So I don't think you could pick one or the other and, and, and make a serious mistake. I think right. it's really at this point a matter of preference, but that's contingent upon you driving it and saying, oh yeah, it drives beautiful. Because I don't know. It yeah. might drive and have a bad idle. I, it wouldn't be sitting here if it did. Right. If it had a bad idle, it would be in my mechanics. Okay. But still, I want you to drive it. I think I'm stuck. Let's put it in four. I was spinning tires. <laughs> I was on leaves. Dude, this one drives way better than the other. It's kind of loud in here. Just a little bit. Alright, let's put this one up and try that other one again. And you can drive one if you want. This one's way quieter. Dang it. I thought I had it figured out. The other one drives better and this one's like literally two times as quiet. Hey, if, uh, if I lose power going up a hill, like not lose power, but just have no torque, is that just me not getting the gearing right yet? Or would that be- Probably. You want me to drive it real quick? It's up to you. I know you got somewhere to be. I'll oh, be I here did. for a little bit. the owner takes him for a ride. <laughs> All right, I want like six of these now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Really? I enjoy this kind of uh, test drive because this guy here, he wants a mini truck and I'm showing him how to drive this thing. <laughs> yeah. you, you get in and you drive it and you have a good time. He's totally fine. <laughs> All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. What just happened? Oh my god. I'm like, is this thing just, is it me? Is this thing losing power going up a hill? What's going on? And he's like, let me hop in and I'll drive it. Dude floors it and like whips it around. I like fall into his lap. <laughs> This is crazy. I love him. Holy crap. This thing will move. <laughs> I was thinking they're like little putt putt like. Holy crap. <laughs> okay, so I got to figure out which of these sandbars I'm going to buy. them to be scared of. Right. That clutch is like, you got you to gotta be like 95% out on the clutch. <laughs> nope. Missed it. Yeah, this is definitely weird. It's not that weird, right? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> That's first. 
like, oh, look. That's why. You didn't take the emergency brake off. <laughs> the motor was sliding. I'm like, why is it sliding? Is it I was like, why? Brakes? Yeah, I was like, why is it stopping when I'm trying to shift? These, so this is a Daihatsu Hijet and the Suzuki carries. Like, if I have the door closed, I have to tuck my elbow to sit here and drive. I have no room. I'm too big for these. I've made my decision. This is the one. It's the one I drove yesterday. This is the one I'm getting. A little wheel and tire upgrade. stop by my grandma's house since I'm really not that far from her house in 28 minutes so it's a little bit of a detour um, but man out on the road these things are not it's not as loud in the cabin like it's not quiet in here but this thing's doing great I'm driving 45 miles an hour cruising I'm doing okay with shifting with my left hand right hand drives not that bad like most of my fears have already been quelled like I can dig this this thing's fun it's a lot of fun. So I'm at my dad's house. He was just you know, 30 miles from where we bought this truck. There we have it. We're here. We got, we got the mini truck. That's my mini truck. You want to see my dad's? He's not here. I wish he was. I would introduce you guys to my dad. He's a brilliant mind. He was always working on stuff, uh, which is probably where I get it. I'm just way worse at execution and learning things than he is. But I have to show you his mini truck. Are you ready? This is some like massive he is the king of redneck engineering you'll see right here you haven't even seen this either it's no. right here <laughs> so this is a nissan hard body that he put on a deuce and a half frame he shortened the deuce and a half frame drove the nissan up on it removed everything this thing is ridiculous look at this and you can see he chopped the frame so the Nissan was rusting out, the frame was rusted out, and the body was starting to rust out. So he shortened that. I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah, so this is what he calls, I think he calls this his doodle bug, but this is basically like repurposing an old truck into a farm tractor. So it's not really a truck, it's a tractor. It's a deuce and a half. This thing's a monster. It just has a Nissan body on it. So yeah, there's a little glimpse into my past. Okay. It's another day. This video has taken way longer to make than I expected, but we made it back safe and sound. It was a bit of a journey. Uh, my knee got a little sore driving back because you can't like straighten out your legs and there's no cruise. So you just got to stay on it. But um, yeah, this was not intended to be a vehicle for long distance travel. I got this for driving around town here and it's been great today. I got it plated this morning. We we're ready to go. Uh, but look at this. This is the coolest thing yet. I, I have my own I have my own parking spot right outside my door. It's beautiful. Let's go look at it. I think it's uh, hard to really convey how big this is, how small it is. I don't know. It's tiny, like really tiny. Uh, and this, this maybe helps a little bit. If you drop this Ooh. tailgate, I mean, it is mid thigh on the bed. One of the most beautiful things about this is that you can on the fly make it a flatbed. Uh, when I upgraded the tires, they are wider now. So this hits the tire. So you, you should be able to ride it with the drop bed, but you can't, or the drop sides. You can take the bed off. There's a screw you remove and the whole thing slides off. And you fold it right back up. Parking violation. No parking permit, no parking area, blocking driveway access. Look at that, they couldn't even spell management right. M-N-G-T, that's not how you spell management. So why did I buy a K truck? Well, I've already explained that the excursion is not always the most practical vehicle. I knew that getting it, I knew that it was big and oversized and like if I need to go somewhere that I have to park in a garage or like if I have to go to Charlotte, I can't park it in most places. So 
this is my get around town daily driver that hopefully will work out. I don't know. But you guys are probably thinking like, I don't need another project. No, I don't. And this is not a project yet. I've always liked these things. I've been looking at them for years and it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago that I realized they are street legal in North Carolina. You can plate them and drive them around on roads 55 miles per hour and under without any issue. So uh, when I started doing research, I found Mayberry Mini Trucks which is in very close proximity to where I grew up. I grew up in Pilot Mountain, Pinnacle, spent a lot of time in Mount Airy. And because of that, I immediately felt drawn to Mayberry Mini Trucks. Um, and then I started digging a little more through their website and found out they are the reason they're street legal in North Carolina. The availability of parts that they have and the fact that they get these things in and service them immediately and fix anything that's wrong with them before they put them out for sale. All of that and Tony's personality and talking to him just drew me to them. I felt like if I was gonna buy one, I wanted to buy from them. Got to test drive all of them. I originally wanted a Suzuki Carry, just for the like obvious reasons. But after driving the Suzuki Carry, I didn't like it. It was too small. The cab was just cramped and the layout wasn't good. So after trying them all, this was by and large my favorite. I ended up with a 1993 Subaru Sandbar. Um, and I like it the most for a couple of reasons. The cab layout, I think is the best, gives you the most amount of room but it is also a rear engine. So the Honda and Subaru are rear engines. Honda places the engine just in front of the rear axle. The Subaru puts it behind the rear axle. But with the Subaru, you also get a four cylinder instead of three cylinder and a five speed manual transmission where most of them, not all of them, but most of the others are four speed. So there's a lot of benefits to the Subaru in and of itself. But yeah, this is what I ended up with. And this will be as long as it keeps running, God willing. Um, this will be my daily driver. It's fun, man. It is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, it's a little cramped for a long drive, which is not recommended, honestly. Tony told me that when I was buying it. I told him I was going to drive it home. He strongly advised against it. I'm glad I did. I'm really glad I did, but not advisable, honestly. Uh, but yeah, let's just show you a few things. Um, this one in terms of body is great there's really very very little damage there's like a little ding there not much there's a tiny tiny little dent here that's barely visible and mostly surface rust that's it there's a whole lot of like touch-up paint which he told me is a very japanese thing when something gets scratched they hit it with spray paint just to cover it up so it won't rust which is good it doesn't look the greatest but it keeps things from rusting so i'm not going to complain about it my plan is to rhino line the whole thing, inside out, bed, everything. I want this whole thing rhino lined, haven't picked a color, but the surface rust doesn't bother me because I'm gonna be covering it all up anyway. And this honestly will be a beater truck, taking things to the dump, picking up firewood, whatever I wanna do with it, that's what this is for. Stuff that makes, you know, driving the excursion, like I don't like taking my trash to the dump in the excursion because bags leak and then you have, trash juice in the carpet like i wanted a bed on a truck so that's really the biggest thing and one of the only things i've missed since selling the at4 and getting the excursion is having a truck bed like the excursion works for a lot 90 percent of what i want but this is the other 10 percent getting around town parking in tight spaces open bed this is the perfect complimentary vehicle to the excursion. I also opted for wheels and tires. They sold these, the whole set was 800 for both wheels and tires. So off the lot, they come with uh, 12 inch wheels. And uh, I believe the tires on those are 20 or 22 inches. These are, or I don't know what size the other tires are. These are 22 inch tires and 14 inch wheels. And I do think that's affecting my top end. I don't think my top speed is what it could be if I had the smaller tires but I don't think I would want this thing with the smaller tires. These are wider, you get better traction. It's just better all around, even though I'm really only pushing like 55 miles an hour flat out. <laughs> um, so rear engine, what I, like I was telling you, this is the access panel and your axle is about here. So this is mounted behind the rear axle. And then to get to your engine, this is one of the coolest things. You have your key push, and there's your engine access right, <laughs> right there. So you have that and this top access panel for getting to engine working on stuff. My plans for this truck, uh, I don't really have many. I wanna keep it mostly how it is. And I will probably have another one of these. I'll probably get a van eventually. 
I uh, showed you one of those builds as we were going there before we even test drove these things. But uh, I do want to rhino line it. I know that. I want to rack on it. And uh, other than that, maybe a light bar too and swap out the head unit, maybe put LED lights on it, but nothing like major. I want this thing to be dependable, reliable daily driver so that I can afford to work on the excursion and Land Rover and take those down for a week or month or two months at a time. As I was saying, one of the, the best things about the sandbar, not just the rear mounted engine, is the cab. Um, you got to ride in all the others too, uh, but you were mostly on the passenger side, but I think you'd confirm that this was the best layout, right? You are a lot, 110 percent. Yeah. So you're you're a lot smaller than me. When I closed the door on the Suzuki, I had to tuck my elbow just to grab the and be able to turn and steer with my right hand. So you're left shifting. You can't really steer left handed, especially when you're getting up to speed. So I had to cut my elbow in to grab the steering wheel because the door was so tight. And they're all the same cab space. It's just the layouts that are different. And being able to test drive all of them in one place. No doubt in my mind, this was the best layout. Uh, Honda was next, and then all of the others were the same. The Suzuki, the Mitsubishi, um, the Daihatsu, all of those were all the exact same. And the one terrible thing about all of these is they don't have cup holders. Except, I learned, this one has a cup holder. It's got a cup holder right there, look at that. Literally every person I've met in person driving this thing, everybody I've talked to about it, Everybody is extremely pumped except for Jordan. You guys know Jordan. He's my business partner with Carry Commission. He thinks this thing is really dumb and everybody else is on board thinks it's awesome. So where do you land? Are you guys a fan of the K-Truck? Because I know I am. This thing, it just makes me happy, right? Like driving it around, I felt like a kid and it was great and it was a lot of fun. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know you probably didn't as much as I did because I've, I've had a really good time this week <laughs> driving around, getting this thing driving this thing around um but yeah that's it for now i'll see you guys very very soon and until then carry on oh and go check out mayberry mini trucks if you are interested go talk to tony and of course tell them i sent you be sure to tell them that don't forget that but i'll see you guys in the next video and until then carry on So what, what do you think about the mini truck? It's let's see how diplomatic you are about this. Uh, as diplomatic as I can be, I think it's fun. Um, I think it works for what you're doing. It is not for me. He can't even be. He can't even be honest about it. He hates it. I don't hate it. I wouldn't buy one. So the personally. thing is, he's doubling down now because all of our friends want one, and he's he's doubling down because he can't be wrong, right? That is correct. I'm super stubborn. Though. Very, very stubborn. Um, so I can't really disagree with that.